we now look at another example. So we have a tall building on which a person is standing and he throws an object upwards with some initial speed. It will rise to some height and then fall down and it will go down and hit the ground. So we're given the initial position and we want to find how high it goes and what are the speeds at different locations. So let's say that this is this point we denote as A. The highest point we write as B. This point which is the same point as A but when the object is falling downwards we call that point C and then any other point along the path let's call that point D and well it could be this could be point E where it hits the ground so we're given that Y then this, this is the Y direction and the ground is Y equal to zero so this point Y at A is 50 meters so it's a 50 meter tall building or rather the person's hand is at 50 meters and it throws it upwards so the speed with which it's thrown upwards is v at a that's the initial speed and that is 20 meters per second and it's positive because this is the positive y direction and this would be the negative y direction okay so these are the two things that we're given and at well, t at that initial time is always taken as zero. So the question is, what is yb? How high does it go? The next is, what is the velocity at the point c? So as it's going down from here right across in front of the person, what is its speed? And then we can find the speed at the point d where D is any arbitrary point. It could be at the bottom or it could be anywhere else. So uh, we, we would like to find how high it goes and these. So the first thing we do is we set up our, uh, write our equations. So we have V final equals V initial plus 80 and X, well, we can write Y final instead of x final it's y initial plus vit plus half at square and vf square equals vi square plus 2a delta y now um, we can again make a list so the first thing we want to do is to find this value so let's say make a list of what we know we know y initial which is 50 meters y final this would be y at a y at b uh, that's what we don't know that's what we are trying to find and then we have a v initial is plus 20 meters per second because it's going up that's v at a v final would be the v at b and we know that it's going to be zero so when an object goes upwards and it going in a straight line and then it starts falling down it has to momentarily stop at that point the v has to be zero but it's only for an instant so we can't measure that instant it's almost tending to zero so it goes slows down stops and starts falling down again so here the v is zero so we can always use that in uh, in these calculations so we have these four now we need the a and that's the acceleration and the t which is the t at t final which is the t at b now the a is constant everywhere so we can just don't doesn't have to be at a or b now this object is accelerating downwards 
So when it's going upwards, the V is positive, but it's slowing down. That means the A has to be negative. When it's falling down, the V is negative, but it's speeding up, which means the A also has to be negative. So the A is negative when it's going up, and the A is negative when it's going down. And the reason is that the direction of acceleration is towards the center of the Earth. That comes because the object is being pulled towards the Earth, so the acceleration is always downwards. The value of this acceleration, we know, is 9.8 meters per second square. And we give this the symbol G. So G is 9.8 meters per second square. <coughs> G is not minus 9.8 meters per second square, like some people do. So G minus 9.8 meters per second square is not correct. G is plus 9.8 meters per second square, and our acceleration is minus G. And that's how we will get a negative here, but the A is minus G, and G is plus 9.8. So A is minus 9.8 meters per second square. So now with these things, uh, we, we were trying to find y final. So we will look at the, these equations, which equation should we use to get yb. So we look at these and we look at what we have. So we have, uh, if let's suppose that we want to use the first equation. So we know the v final, we know the v initial, we know the a, so we can get the t. Okay, so let we can get the t from here. If you use this equation to get y final, we know y initial, we know v initial, we don't know the t, so we have two unknowns, y final and t. And if you use this equation, we know the v final and v initial, the a, we can get the height from here. <coughs> so if we want to get the height, we can use this equation directly, and we can get the time from this equation. And then with the time, we can get the height from this equation also. So let's just use this equation to get the, uh, the height. So we have v final square equals v initial square plus 2a delta y. y v final is 0. We get it from here. v initial is 20 meters per second. So v final is... 0, 20 square, the acceleration is minus g, which is 9.8, so it's minus 9.8 meters per second square, and the delta y is y final minus y initial, so this becomes uh, 400 with a negative, and bring it on the other side, and this becomes minus 19.6. Let's just write it as a delta y, and therefore our delta y is going to be 400 over 19.6, which is 20.4, with a plus because the two negatives cancel, 20.41. And so because the initial was 50, Therefore, y final is going to be 50 plus 20. Okay, so it's going to be 50 up to here from the ground. And the distance from here to here is 20.4. So, y final becomes 20.4. Fifty plus twenty point four one, which is seventy point four meters. So that becomes y b. Now, how long did it take to reach the point b? So we have the answer to y b seventy point four. Now, how long does it? Uh, well, let's first find how long it takes to reach the point b. 
So we can use this equation to get the time. So we have V final equals V initial plus 80. V final is zero. V initial is 20 in the positive direction. A is minus 9.8 T and therefore our T is minus 20 over minus 9.8 it is 2.04 seconds so it takes 2.04 seconds to reach the highest point now let's find the other things what as it's falling down what is the speed as it crosses the point c which is the same as the point a so we look at the equations we know the uh, initial velocity which is now at the point b at the highest point that's what we're looking for we see but we don't know the t so we can use this equation again so let's say v uh, equals v initial square plus 2a delta y so that's v at c square is v at b square plus 2a and delta y is from b to c okay so that's the the point b and the point c and now it's falling down so this is the initial and this is now the final so vc is what we are looking for vb is the speed here which is zero the acceleration is this way so it's minus 9.8 it's in that negative y direction and delta y is this distance from here to here which we know that don't we so it's uh, minus 19.6 and the delta y is we just found that as 20.41 so it's negative 20.41 because it's final minus initial and final is lower than the initial This comes to 400.036 and so when we get Vc, it's the square root of 400 is plus minus 20 meters per second. Always write plus minus and then select the appropriate one. In this case, Vc is going to be minus 20.0 meters per second because we know from physics that it's falling downwards. From mathematics, we get two answers. Physics tells us which of these is correct. And what you see is it's exactly the same as negative of VA. So VA was going upwards and VC is going downwards, but it has the same speed. So an object would have exactly the same speed at these two points. And it's true for any other point. So whatever is the speed here going up, will be exactly the same here going down. So at any point, whatever is the upper speed is the same as the downward speed. The velocities are opposite of each other. Now, how much time does it take to go from B to C? So the delta T from B to C, we can say VF equals VI plus AT. So V final we found as minus 20, that's at C, V initial is zero, acceleration is minus 9.8 T, and that gives us T is 2.04 seconds, and it's positive. Two negatives make it a positive. So the time taken is also the same. So, that, so the time taken from A to B is the same as from B to C, and the speeds at C are also equal. So this motion is symmetric. So the time it takes to go from, for example, here to here will be exactly the same as it takes to go from the corresponding point down to here. And the speed here is the speed here. The direction is opposite. Now let's look at the next thing. So we got we got Vc is minus 20 meters per second and <clears throat> the velocity at any 
any specific point, which could be anywhere along the path, either going up or going down. Suppose you want to find the speed here, well, you could have a positive or a negative. You'll get two answers, just, just like we got here. So the speed at D, well, we can simply say V at D equals VA, that's the initial, plus AT. So if we know the T between A and D, how much time it takes to go from A to D, then we can solve it. But we don't know that, so we can simply use the other equation, VD square equals VA square plus 2A delta Y between A and D. And so this is 20 plus 20 square, 2 minus 9.8 and delta Y. So let's assume that this point D is, um, let's just take a number, say 30 meters below this. So the delta Y is minus 30. And we can solve this. Two negatives would make it a positive. So it's 400 plus 588. And so the VC is going to be, uh, we add them together and take the add them together and take the square root it comes to plus minus 31.43 meters per second and because we know it's going downwards so the answer is minus 31.4 meters per second so always remember to take plus minus and then select the appropriate one so if you were asked what is the speed here? You would get a plus and a minus, and they would both be correct. So if this, if you're required for the speed going up, it's the positive. If you, if the speed going down, the velocity going down, it would be the negative. But both answers would be correct at that point. You would also get two answers for t. Well, let's do that. Um, it reached a height of uh, the delta t was 20 meters. So let's say 10 meters. After how much time would it be at 10 meters? So you throw it up from here, it reaches that point B, I've made it a little larger. So at 10 meters, so from here, this is 50, this would be 60, and this distance is 10. So what is the time over here? And there'll be two answers. So if we write xf equals xi plus vit half a t square so our this would be our x final or rather y final you can change these two y's this would be y initial so y final is going to be 60 y initial is 50 v initial is 20 meters per second half minus 9.8 t square so we get 60 minus 50 is 10 equals 20 t minus 4.9 t square or rearranging it we get So we get, uh, we're rearranging it, we get 4.9 t square minus 20 t plus 10 equals zero. This is a quadratic equation. So we look at it as ax square plus bx plus c is zero. The solution is x equals minus b plus minus square root b square minus 4ac over 2a. And so we get t equals minus b, so it becomes 20 plus minus square root of 20 square minus 4 times a times c. 
over 2 times 4.9 and this becomes 20 plus minus 400 minus 40 times 4.9 is 196 over 9.8 so it's 20 plus minus 14.28 over 9.8 which becomes 34.28 over 9.8 which is 3.4979 and the other is 20 minus 14.28, which is 5.72 over 9.8, which is 0 0.58367, which is uh, 0 0.584 seconds to three significant figures. So which of these is correct? They're both positive and they're both correct. This is while going up and this is while going down. So it's uh, at 0.584 seconds while going up and at 3.4 seconds while going down. So you have uh, both answers in this case are correct. So the question should have specified whether we want it at this point while it's going up or while it's going down.